CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... A famous historian once said, All the historical books which contain no lies are extremely tedious indeed. This is because a little lie here and there is supposed to add interest and excitement. Well, never mind what the historians say. We disagree. The little history you're about to hear is the truth. The whole truth and nothing but. Don't move. What? It's a pistol. Your money or your life. What did you say? I said your money or your life. Go ahead. Take it. Take what? My life. <laughs> Our mystery drama, The Iron Horse, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Norman Rose. I'll be back shortly with Act One. A CBS television special movie presentation. I just hope nobody gets hurt. The place, Little Rock, Arkansas. The year, 1957. A school is integrated for the first time. Result, crisis at Central Hall. Cannot close It was a time of fear and hate. Somebody get me. Joanne Woodward gives one of the most compelling performances of her career. Yes, as much right to be here as anybody else. A year that changed America forever. Crisis at Central Hall. Premieres Wednesday at 9, 8 Central and 9 on CBS television. Hope you got what I need. What's wrong? Pain, itch, you know, hemorrhoids. Been driving my truck all day and I need Preparation H. Right. Gives lots of people temporary relief. Its special ingredients relieve pain and itch flare-ups. Helps shrink swelling of inflamed hemorrhoidal tissue. That's real medicine. I'll take ointment and suppositories. Hi. Feeling better today? Oh, thanks to you, good buddy. Preparation H relieves pain and itch. Helps shrink swelling. Use only as directed. Hi, this is Andy Williams. I learned about the importance of donating blood when my mother became ill. Although most people could qualify as donors, many have not donated blood because they have not personally experienced the need, either for themselves or for those they care about. Presently, over 30,000 pints of blood are required in the United States every day, and the need is increasing. The balance between supply demand and human life depends on you, the public. Donors often respond when there is an emergency or a disaster, but blood of every group and type must be available at all times. Blood banks depend on people who are willing to give to meet the day-to-day -day blood needs. Donate today at a blood bank in your community. Blood is life. Let's keep it running. A public service of this station and the American Association of Blood Banks. The hero of our story, I say hero, but don't be misled. A slayer of dragons he never was, but he's the best available hero we've got for this particular story. He lived maybe 150 years ago in a little village somewhere in Central Europe. A village the rest of the world knew nothing about, but that's all right. The people of this little village didn't know very much about the rest of the world either. About our hero, his name was Mendel. And one day, he had been summoned to appear before the local landholder, the Count. The imperial representative of the Emperor Franz Joseph himself. Well, Mandels, you're here. Uh, yes, Your Highness. Do you know why I sent for you? Oh, yes, Your Highness. Speak. Uh, obviously, because Your Highness wishes to buy more horses. And that's why you believe you're here? Yes. That is not why you are summoned, Mendel. It isn't? No. Why should I buy more horses from you when the ones you sold me last month died? They... they died? All ten of them. All ten? Yes, Mendel. But, but I don't know what to say, Your Highness. You don't, but I do. 
I paid you 250 kroner for those horses, did I not? Oh, yes, yes, Your Highness. Therefore, I expect you to give me back my money. Oh, but, Your Highness... Yes? I, uh, well, horses die. Not the ones I purchase in good faith. Uh, but, Your Highness, I... Are you telling me you've already spent the money? Well, there were debts, and these are hard times. No, you don't have to pay me right away. Oh, thank you, Your Highness. I'll give you a week. Red Mendel, my dear, dear friend. Good afternoon, Sora. Oh, please, sit down. Have some wine, some cakes. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, you're looking splendid these days. I think we had better get to business. Yes, yes, of course. No doubt you're prepared to discuss the dowry. The dowry? Your daughter, Mark, is dowry. After all, we have arranged for her to marry my son, Avram. Oh, the dowry. Yes, certainly. Why not? Uh, now, uh, about the dowry. What about the dowry? Sura, you are the most perceptive and intelligent of women. What about the dowry? Well... Does that well mean what I think it means? Uh, please, listen... The match is all. Uh, let me explain. There is absolutely no need for explanation. All that is required is the agreed upon dowry. The dowry will be forthcoming. But. There is a but, isn't there? Asura. Nice to have seen you, Mendel. Drop in again sometime and we can have a more tangible discussion. Asura. Uh, you must help me. Of course. I'll help you to the door. But I have nowhere to go. You must lend me. 250 kroner. If you expect me to lend you 250 kroner, you do have somewhere else to go. The lunatic asylum. But the count, if I, if I don't pay him the money, he'll, he'll throw me in jail. Good afternoon, Mendel. I'll pay you back. You will. How? We don't see. Goodbye, Mendel. Sura. Listen, Sura, I was born under a lucky star. I am the seventh son of a seventh son. I am destined to be rich. The seventh son of a seventh son. According to all the legends... Mendel, I said goodbye. Stan. Huh? What? Your money or your life? What are you saying? Your money or your life? <sighs> Go ahead, take my life. I'm not joking. And I am? Look, my friend, you gave me a choice. I chose. I'm warning you. I don't have any money, so it has to be my life. What do you mean you don't have any money? Everybody has to have something. Nothing. But don't tell me you have nothing at all. Not a copper penny. So go ahead, shoot. Shoot? What else can we do? You have no right to place me in this kind of position. That's all right. This is the best thing that could happen to me anyhow. I give you my permission, shoot. But I can't shoot. Why not? Because the pistol isn't loaded. The pistol isn't loaded? What kind of a bandit are you, anyhow? Who can afford to carry a loaded pistol these days? Do you know how much it costs for ball, powder, and percussion caps? Oh, I'm sorry. You think a bandit has such a great life? I, I haven't eaten in three days. Oh, business is bad with you, too, huh? Why did I turn thief? To raise some money. So where can I go from here? To raise money? For what? To buy a horse. Oh, talk to me. I'm a horse dealer. No, this isn't your kind of horse. This is an iron horse. A horse? Made of iron? That's right. Oh, my poor friend. Hunger must have made you a little bit, uh, you know, light in the head. Uh, but come home with me. We'll see what's for supper. But, Papa... All we have to eat in the house is potatoes. If that's what we've got, that's what we'll eat. Papa, you went to see Avram's mother this afternoon? Yes, uh, Sura, I did. Are you sure? Am I sure? Of course I'm sure. Oh, I'm so happy. I love Avram so much. Uh, well, uh, uh, don't worry. Worry? You mean there's something to worry about? No, 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 there's nothing at all. Then why did you tell me not to worry? Malcolm, my child. We have a guest. Prepare the supper. Ah, I, uh, 
delicious. Uh, was that a meal or was that a meal? Uh, it was delicious. <laughs> True, it was mostly potatoes, but uh, so artistically prepared, no? My compliments, Miss Malka. Yes, Malka will soon marry the son of the richest woman in the village. I'm sure she shall make him even richer in happiness. Uh, very well put. Now, Malka, my dearest daughter, uh, you may leave us. We are about to discuss business. Yes, Father. <sighs> Charming. <laughs> uh, now, sir, about this uh, iron horse. Yes. If only I had 250 kroner. <laughs> 250 kroner. You too? Go ahead with the story. The Iron Horse is a name that we give to a locomotive. Mm -hmm. And what, if I may inquire, is a locomotive? Eh, something new. Invented by an Englishman, George Stevenson. It's a steam engine with wheels. And it pulls carriages. Oh, that's impossible. It runs on tracks. It's called a railway. They want to build one from Vienna to Graz. The world has gone mad. They need money, which is why they're trying to sell shares. For 250 kroner, I could buy... Uh, well, in a year, less... It would increase 50, 100, 1,000 times. My friend, I look at you. I look at myself. We were born to be fools. I listen to you, and my pulses pound. My blood races. My, my hopes rise to the skies. And very soon, I dash to the ground. But this is the future. You believe you can see the future? In this case, yes. That is your madness. Uh, let me tell you mine. I believe in a legend. An old legend that says, good luck will come to a man who is the seventh son of a seventh son. I am the seventh son of my father, who was the seventh son of my grandfather. Ooh, then you must be a very lucky man indeed. Yeah. I never had a lucky day in my life. Uh, but surely the day your daughter was born. Oh, such a beautiful girl. Uh, I'm talking about practical things. You mean you no longer believe in the legend? Well, tonight I have forced myself to face reality. The legend says good luck will come, but it doesn't say when. I'm 40 years old. But the Bible says our span shall be three score and ten. You have almost half your life left to live. No, no. I'm a fool. I see it all so clearly now. Uh, what do you see so clearly? I have permitted myself to indulge in a fantasy that luck would one day bring me a fortune. So I waited for it to come instead of going out and working for it. It is written, all good things come to him who waits. Yeah, and thus my daughter is without a dowry. For 250 kroner, we could make her one of the richest heiresses in Europe. Ah, 250 kroner. If only I had 250 kroner. Lend them to me, Mendel. I don't have them. Yeah, I, I know. But if you did have them, would you lend me the 250? Where would I get such an amount? Well, suppose somehow they fell into your hands. Would you lend them to me? Sure. Of course I would. Ah, thank you, Mendel, for a most satisfying dinner and a most encouraging conversation. Remember, you did promise to lend me the 250 kroner. Hello, Avram? Uh, oh, oh, it's Malka. Yes, it's Malka. Have you forgotten what I look like? How can you say that? I haven't seen you in such a long time. Well, I, um, uh, I've been busy. Doing what? Is it true we aren't engaged anymore? Oh, how can you say that? Is it true? Well, I, I don't know where you ever... I understand. That is, I hear that Hannah the matchmaker is trying to find you another bride. Oh, now that's... Uh... Is it true? My mother. What about your mother? Well, she doesn't think... Well, she knows now that your father doesn't have the dowry. Oh. Well, 
You know my mother. Yes. I always knew your mother. Until now, I thought I knew you. Oh, Malka, please understand. You told me you loved me. Yeah, I do, but that... When it comes to love, there can be no but. My... My mother says that a marriage between you and me is impossible. Then what do you say? Well, what can I say? You could say to your mother, I love Malka. I did say it, and you know what she did? She laughed at me. I see. No, you don't see. You think I'm a person who simply has no backbone, but that is not true. One cannot go against one's parents. It, it isn't right. After all, aren't we commanded, honor thy father and thy mother? I won't keep you any longer, Avram. And since my father is dead, I must honor my mother twice as much. <laughs> Malka, are you home? Yes, Father. I'm home. I have the most fantastic news. Oh, Father. Oh, what is it? Avram. What about Avram? He, his mother has broken our engagement. Oh, that. You're better off. Oh, please, Papa, don't say that. I love you. Nonsense. You are going to marry a prince. No, no, Father. Not now. Not today. I just want to be alone cry for a little bit and start to reconcile myself to the fact that I'm going to be an old maid. (laughs) They'll come knocking on this door by the hundreds, the thousands, the men who will seek you out in marriage. Oh, princes, kings, millionaires, great men of wealth and learning. How will we ever choose among them? Oh, please, Father. Oh, come, come and not of that. This is a day on which we must celebrate. Prepare, prepare the supper. You, you'll notice we have a, a, a goose, a fresh white bread, wine, fruit. Oranges? Father, where did you... I have arranged to build a new house. This hovel, it, it doesn't suit me. Huh? The money? Where did you... The legend, Malka. Huh? It has come true at last. Uh... Malka, we're rich. Rich as Rothschild. Which is certainly rich enough. Legends do come true, sometimes. And evidently our hero has come into some money, as all the delicious and expensive items on the table will testify. But what happened? And how did it happen? And what does it mean? For that, we must await the second act. I like pepperoni, but it doesn't like me. When you're suffering from acid indigestion and gas, get Digel fast. Unlike plain antacids, Digel adds a special ingredient for more relief. I like corn beef. I like cabbage. I like rice. I like beef. I like spaghetti. I like beef. But they don't like me. Occasional use only is directed. Would you like to replace a worn fixture in your bathroom or kitchen, but don't feel you're enough of a plumber to do the job? Hi, Pat Summerall to say that True Value Hardware Stores can help you accomplish more than you might think. That's because they offer more than just quality supplies. They also can give you helpful how-to hints. So don't discard a plumbing improvement project because you think it might be too complicated or too expensive. Check first with your source for quality, selection, and service. Your nearby True Value Hardware Store or Home Center. And tell them Pat Summerall sent you. Before you fit into our uniform, you'll run a hundred miles. You'll strengthen muscles you never knew you had. And you'll study things you've never studied before. Then you'll fit the dress blues uniform of the United States Marine. Maybe you can be one of us. The few, the proud, the Marines. If you're a retailer, you need customer traffic now. Radio is the hot traffic builder. This station will tell you how the right message, the right promotion, the right schedule can make your sales grow fast. Every day, radio reaches more adults than newspapers, TV, or magazines. So get radio sending the people your way. Heat up customer traffic and sales now. Radio, it's red hot. Get more facts. Call this station or the Radio Advertising Bureau. They brought you this message.
What is the old saying? If you're fated to drown, you can drown in a cup full of water. If it's your destiny to be rich, fight against it as hard as you will. One day you'll be wealthy. These things have been decided long in advance, we are told, and only fools strike out against the inevitable. Papa, what are you talking about? The money. Where did you get the money? Sit down, my child, and I shall tell you something that has evidently escaped your attention. Please. You are, you have been, a good daughter in every respect, but one. Just tell me about the money. I know you love me, but you do not obey the commandments. You do not honor me. Oh, no, Father, not that. I say that because you did not believe in me. I told you about the legend that said that I would one day be rich. And you thought to yourself, I could see it in your eyes, poor old man. Now, Papa, I never You said... did. But it doesn't matter. I forgive you. Here, read. Read this letter. It came for me today. A letter? What? We never received a letter in our life. Read it. Oh, such paper. It's... It's parchment. Mm-hmm. It's what the emperor would use to write a decree. We shall one day meet the emperor because now we are rich and important people. Father, I... What does it mean? Why don't you read the letter? Good heavens, I... I spent long, weary hours teaching you to read. Have you forgotten everything so soon? To... Herr Mendel Esquire? Yeah, you see how it began. As attorneys at law for the late... Ma, more empty Rothschild, we are pleased to inform you that you are the sole heir to his estate. What do you say now? Oh, all the necessary documents will be forwarded as soon as the required legal procedures have been performed. Congratulations. Signed, Baum, Wheeler, and Schottenfass. Attorney, Vienna. Oh, oh, Father! Oh. Now, what do you say? What do I say? Oh, now I can marry Avro. You don't want to marry Avro, do you? Hmm. Well, I'm not so sure. You're an heiress, my dear. Oh, yes. You are going to be richer than he is. Oh, I never thought of that. Yeah, well, think about it. Answer it, my daughter. Oh, yes, Father. Soon we shall have servants to attend to little details like this. But uh, meanwhile... Oh, I understand. Why? It's Sholom. <laughs> yes, 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 it's Sholom. Oh, oh, how dare you. Please, sit down, Sholom. Uh, have a glass of wine. Uh, wine? Oh, wine? Well, that's my wine. <laughs> Give me everything that's left here. Everything you stole from my shop. Father, you didn't... How dare you, Mendel? How dare Father, what did you do? Hey, buddy, I'll tell you what the scoundrel did. I was away. I left my assistant in the shop. I <laughs> should have known better. He's a fool. Why did I hire him? Eh? What did my father do? He convinced that idiot to sell him all that food and wine and fruit and preserves on credit. Father! And you... You took advantage of me. You told that young fool that you'd come into an inheritance. I have. Don't try that with me. We know each other too long. It's true. Don't lie to my face and make it right. Read this. <laughs> what? Go ahead, read. <laughs> this, this is to inform you. <laughs> hey, Mendel. Yes? Oh, Mendel. <laughs> what can I say? You can say... You're sorry. <laughs> well, and we'll leave. We've been friends since we were boys. Please, please feel entirely at home in my shop. Oh, it's an honor to be of service to an old friend. Credit? Oh, what's credit? Mendel, the word comes from credibility, which means belief. You understand? I understand. And I always believed in you, Mendel. You can ask my wife. I always would say to her, Leah, that Mendel, he was born under a lucky star. <laughs> One day he's, he's going to be as rich as his, as his Midas. <laughs> what a Mendel. Well, my dear friend, any time for anything you choose, your credit is unlimited. Oh, thank you, Sean. 
Dollar. You know, you always were a trusting soul. Oh, oh, Mandel, my friend. If we cannot trust our fellow men, of what use is life itself, huh? <laughs> oh, the goose. It was tender enough. Oh, it was excellent. Ah, shall I send another? Huh? And the fruit. Oh, I have oranges from Spain and preserves. Mm-hmm. Well, whatever you think, Sholem, whatever you think. Well, then I must be off. Hey, hey, good day to you, my very best friend. <laughs> and good day to you, Mistress Malka. <laughs> Mistress Malka, what a fine ring that has. Father. Oh, Father. I just remember... No, what is it? The week is out. What week? He was supposed to give the Count his money. 250 kroner. Ah, don't worry about it, my darling little one. Don't trouble your pretty head. Mendel. Ah, Sura. May I come in? Of course. Have a seat. Ah, uh, thank you. A glass of wine, perhaps. Mendel, I'll come to the point. About a week ago, we had a little discussion. We did? Yes. Or perhaps we did. I speak to so many people these days, you know, I, I no longer can keep track. Let us say we had a misunderstanding. Uh, refresh my memory. About what? About the marriage. The marriage? The marriage between Avram and Malka. Oh, that marriage. No, they love each other very much. Uh, Sura, as I recall, you are the one who broke the engagement. I was feeling under the weather. You know how it is sometimes. You feel miserable, you just lash out. Yes. How is she, the darling girl? Oh, what a treasure. This match was made in heaven. That's what I said to myself. How can anyone come between them? Shall I tell you something, Sura? Frankly. Please. Well, between us, there should be no secrets. Sura, I felt that you never liked me. How can you say such a thing like that? You always felt that I was a silly, impractical dreamer who would never amount to anything. Lando. I'm sorry. That's how it appeared. Oh, but it isn't true. But I admire you above all men. And there is nothing I wouldn't do for you. <laughs> yes, a week ago you ordered me out of your house. Oh, Mendel, that's a bad dream. Let's dismiss it completely from our memory. And why? Why? What did I do? Oh, Mendel, I am sorry. I was temporarily embarrassed, financially. It's the kind of thing that can happen to any of us. Of course, of course. Yet you chose to make an issue of it. Mendel, as I told you, I was out of sorts. I have a fault. I'll confess it. I have a bad, no, an abominable temper. I try to control it, but at times it gets the better of me. What can I do? I'm only a human being. Forgive me. Well, you ordered me out of your house. If I recall, you suggested that I repair to a lunatic asylum. Mando, do you know what I would give if only I could call those words back? And what did I do to earn this anger? Huh? I only asked you for a tiny favor. You remember? Do you remember, Sura, what that tiny, insignificant favor was? Mm-hmm. I asked you for a loan. A loan of 250 kroner. Yes, yes, Mendel. That's all. 250 measly little kroner. And I don't know, the, the, the roof fell in. Uh, I, I haven't slept in a week. If only I could relive that day. No, no. Once the act has been committed, it is gone. It falls into the vast empty space of eternity. Please, Mendel. Don't let 250 kroner come between us. Well... What do you suggest? Here. I brought them with me in this envelope. But take it. Don't it. Oh, but the situation is different. I no longer need to borrow this money. You told me the count must be repaid. Of course. Well, you have come into a fortune. But it will take a little time before the money is in your hands. Now... That's true, isn't it? I suppose. But I can explain the situation to the Count. He'll be willing to wait. No, Mendel. It's better not to keep people like that waiting. 
Kill them. Be rid of them. Keep me waiting. Oh, sir. You have such a good heart. <laughs> Let me make amends for the way I treated you. It was a sin. Let me atone for it. And what does it amount to, after all, 250 kroner? Ah, uh, sir, sir, what can I say? Don't say anything. Just take the money. Stan! <laughs> Look who's here. How are you, my friend? Up to your old tricks again, huh? No, I had to abandon that line. I was terrible at it. But I've come back to see you. It's a pleasure. Uh, walk a little way with me, huh? Where are you going? My friend, I am bound for the palace of the Count himself. Oh, is that a fact? The most marvelous thing has happened. I have come into an inheritance. No. Yes, and now I have plenty of money. I'm going to repay the Count. Good. If you have plenty of money, then you can lend me 250 kroner. Oh, but uh, 250 kroner is all I have. They belong to me. What? Oh, you don't remember. We were in your kitchen eating those delicious potatoes cooked by your most beautiful daughter. And I asked you to lend me 250 kroner. What did you say? I said I didn't have them. Yes, and what did I say? I said if you did have them, would you lend them? And you said yes. Is it a promise, I asked? Yes, you promised. Oh, I didn't think that I would ever have... Isn't it a sin to make a promise one has no intention of keeping? Oh, I would like to. The money has been pledged to me. But I owe it to the Count. Who can make better use of it? That is not the question. By now, everyone knows of your good fortune. Everyone knows the legend has come true. The Count will not press you. He'll be willing to wait. Even so. But I can't. The Iron Horse can't. Now listen to me, Mendel. It's a new world. A new way to travel. Oh, please. A few men, a handful, will make their fortune. A few men with vision. The rest will sit by and let opportunity escape. And they will spend the rest of their lives being sorry. Don't you be one of those people. But the money, it isn't mine. What money is ever yours? Do you take the money to paradise with you when your time comes, do you? No, you leave it here. Now, that's a fact, isn't it? Well, yes. All you ever have here below is the use of the money, an opportunity to make it grow. Mendel, I tell you, your 250 kroner are nothing but a little acorn. Watch it grow into a mighty oak. Oh, my friend, please, don't tempt me. Mandel, place 250 kroner in my hand right now, and I give you my solemn oath that before too long, I shall place 25,000, 250,000 in yours. What do you say, Mandel? Huh? What do you say? Mandel? What? Me think. No. Don't think. Thinking is not for men who have luck. And you are the seventh son of a seventh son. Fate has already done your thinking for you. Fate wants to make you the richest man in the world. Now, just hand over the money. <laughs> destiny. When she is in control, shouldn't one ride? You might say, what's the point in being lucky if one doesn't know how to use one's luck? Poor Mendel. Things are happening a little too fast for him, aren't they? But if you think we're moving along now, wait till you see the pace in Act Three. Cyril introduces Mr. Buster Crab, film actor and author of Buster Crab's arthritis exercise book. I wrote a book on relieving arthritis pain, and I recommend new Icy Hot Cream in the tube. Rub it on. Icy Hot's penetrating warmth reaches way down inside to help relieve minor pain, while a feeling of coolness soothes your skin. I'm convinced that new greaseless Icy Hot Cream will give you fast, effective relief that lasts for hours. Use only as directed. 
Like Minute Maid orange juice, some things never change. Kids. I'm too old to kiss you, Dad. Can't we shake hands? And father's too old. I still kiss my father. Oh, Dad, that's different. The great taste of Minute Maid orange juice is never going to change. It's always 100% pure. And we'll be making that same delicious taste when your kids have kids. Make sure of the taste. Hi, this is Kenny Rogers. Every cigarette smoker can stop. Don't care how long or how much you smoked, how many times you've fallen off the wagon and tried to crawl back on, or how changed you may think you are to your cigarettes. Well, here's some tips on how to get loose from the cigarettes. First, believe in yourself. Then, begin to carry your cigarettes in a different place. Switch your brand of cigarettes at least twice a week. Don't carry matches or a lighter. Challenge yourself each morning by jotting down how many cigarettes you think you need. And at night, how many you actually smoke. Don't get crippled in your best years by heart disease. Get some help. Quit smoking. Call the American Heart Association and put your money where your heart is. Give to the American Heart Association. They're fighting for your life. the skin of the bear that's still in the woods. Makes a great deal of sense. But it's a maxim more honored in the breach. That's human nature, isn't it? And what a market there is in unskinned bears, unhatched chickens, and birds with salt on their tails. Tell me more about this iron horse. What's there to tell? It's a steam engine. It moves itself on wheels along an iron track. I never heard of such a thing. It pulls carriages, and they can be filled with people, with goods. Oh, well, what's going to happen to horses? There won't be a need for any. Huh. Then what's going to happen to horse dealers? They'll starve, which is why you need a new profession. <laughs> I don't need any kind of profession anymore. I have come into an inheritance. I'm a rich man. Well, then behave like one. What do you mean? Rich men must always do something with their money. They just can't sit there all day and look at it. Listen, Mendler, unless you invest your money, no one will believe you're rich. An iron horse? Believe me, Mendler, for you, it will be a golden horse. So, my child, how do you like it? himself will not live in a finer-looking house. Father, can we afford it? Of course we can afford it. Hasn't that come into an inheritance? Yes, but... But? We don't know how large that inheritance will be. My child, the man was a Rothschild. Doesn't that tell the story? Why, I suppose so. Now listen, wait here. I want to go inside and talk to the foreman. I want to make sure that he's using the right wood. Uh, hello, Malcolm. I do believe it. Oh, yes. You must be Avram. Oh, Malka. Well, Avram, what have you been doing with yourself these days? Listening to your mother, no doubt. Oh, Malka, I must talk to you. Oh, well, isn't that what we're doing now? My, my mother says your father's, well, he's playing hard to get about the match. Well, that isn't true. He isn't. I am. You? Oh, yes, Ava. Me. Well, your mother officially broke off our engagement. My father has since been entertaining other offers. But, Malka, I love you. With your mother's permission, of course. I've been a fool. Well, I must be going. Goodbye, Ava. It was very pleasant talking to you. Hey, 
Yes, uh, uh, good day to you, Mendel. Shalom, uh, my good friend. Yes, uh, they told me I would find you here. Oh, yes? yes. Now, is there going to be a magnificent house? Oh, I can see. Of course. Uh, 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 Mendel. Yes, what is it, Shalom? Yes, I was wondering, could you... Uh, I, I hate to ask. Go ahead. Could you advance me some money on your bill? Oh, my bill? Yes. You see, I, I have some debts that are... Well, they're due, you see. And oh, I, yes, yes, I understand, my friend. Well, I certainly have no wish to press you. I understand. just haven't heard from my attorneys yet, that's all. Yeah, but I have to order more goods. And uh, the people who sell to me have to be paid. <laughs> it's a mess. Oh, yes, I can imagine. I just can't extend you any more credit at this time. Please, don't don't be angry oh, with me. Sure. Aren't we, haven't we always been the best of friends? Yes. I shall it not continue? Oh, oh, Mendel, of course. Father? What is it, my dear? I was out to the house. Yes? It's quiet. Quiet? Well, nobody's there. I saw one of the workmen. He he had come back for one of his tools. Well, I asked him what was wrong, and he said they weren't going to hammer in another nail till they got paid. Father, I... Oh, well, everyone will just have to wait, I suppose. But surely it's going to be all right. Of course, my child. Should I answer Of course, it? why not? Oh, your highness. Your highness, Please, uh, uh, come in. Uh, welcome, Your Highness. I believe you owe me 250 kroner, Mendel. Of course I do, Your Highness, but uh, we uh, we uh, we spoke about it, I remember. Yes, I remember too. I, I told you that I had come into an inheritance, and so you very graciously said that you would wait. Yes, I did say that. You, even as I recall, showed me the letter from the attorneys in Vienna. Yes, Your Excellency. I was pleased. I was happy for you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Until I made inquiries in Vienna. Uh, inquiries, Your Excellency? No one ever heard of a Montmorency Rothschild. Oh, oh. Perhaps he was a, a distant relative of the family. But the firm of attorneys that had signed the letter, no one ever heard of them either. Oh, oh Your Excellency. They do not exist in Vienna. The address? No such street exists in Vienna. I don't understand. The thing is a hoax. But why should... I mean... Well, I, I don't know what I mean. At any rate, the debt is still 250 kroner. You have a week. I expect to be paid at that time. Or else. Good day, Mandel. Miss. Father, what are we going to do? My child, we must hope and pray that uh, uh, somehow this thing will work its way out. Oh, uh, Father, listen. What is it? Voices. Well, people outside the door. Father, I'm afraid. Don't open it. Well, we have to face it sooner or later, my child. Hey! So in love. My friends, don't you call me your friends. My friends, what is it? Yes, as if you didn't know. You cheated us. But what did I do? I'll tell you what you did. You wrote yourself that letter. That is not true. There is no such law firm. The Count informed us. He didn't want to see his honest subjects being cheated any longer. Good people, I assure you. You knew we would all give you credit, you know. All of us. We're going to petition the Count. He's going to put you in prison. You and that daughter of yours. She's in it, too. No. You be quiet, Abram. No. No, she's good and she's kind and she's honest. And I don't care if she doesn't have a penny. I'm going to marry her anyway. I hope it. Is. What are you going to do? Disinherit me? So? I'll be poor. It's not so terrible. Don't say that, Abram. I don't care. Malka... Malka, you're going to marry me and nobody else. Do you understand? She can't marry you if she's going to be in jail. Who's going to be in jail? Who are you? Why, I happen to be Mendel's business partner. Well, then you'll go to jail, too. I believe my partner owes you 250 kroner, madame. 
Here you are. Uh, what? What's this? Count it. You'll find it correct. And you, with a large mouth. How much does Mendel owe you? Ten kroner. No, such a fuss about ten kroner. Here, here, here you are. The rest of you line up by the door, and you will all be paid. Oh, by the way, I encountered the Count en route. I paid him off, too, Mendel. But... Oh, Ron, did you mean what you said? Yes. Oh, Ron, over oh, why don't you two young people go off somewhere in private and discuss it among yourselves, huh? And now for the debts. Mendel, I must insist that you hear me out. I, uh, well, this is just another one of my bad days on which I say all sorts of ridiculous things. I understand. <laughs> Mendel, Mendel, we're friends. But friends must always have these little misunderstandings. You know why? Because they test the bonds of friendship and make sure that they're strong. Of course. Please, Mendel, take back the 250 krona. I don't want them. I'll throw them away. I won't take a penny of your money in my shop. Not now, not ever. Please, Mendel. Thank you, good friends. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I must talk with my business partner. Oh, certainly, Mendel. Oh, we understand. What happened? I told you what would happen. If you put 250 krona in my hand, I would put 25,000, 250,000 krona in yours. Well, my friend, this is just the beginning. The beginning? The very day after I bought that stock, the prices shot up into the sky. I don't understand. Suddenly they all started talking about the iron horse. It was unbelievable. Oh, then there is such a thing. And soon you shall ride it between Vienna and Graz as a major stockholder of the company. No. And one of the carriages shall have the following name painted on it. The Seventh Son. In your honor. The legend that came true. Well... Oh, no, no, tell me. Was it you who wrote that letter? Yes. Oh, no. No, no, no. I cannot accept any of this money. Why not? Because it is dishonest. How can you say that? Who's been swindled? The Count? Sir? Shalom? Everybody's been paid, haven't they? Well, yes. And the legend of the seventh son of the seventh son, that has come true, hasn't it? Yes. But you wrote that letter. Of course. It was the only way. The only way? My friend, if you want a legend to come true, you have to uh, help it along just a little tiny bit. Everything needs a good start in life, even a legend. And so our friend Mendel became a rich and powerful man in the world. His daughter was happy. His son-in-law was happy. Actually, every character in this story was made happy. Now, that's some sort of record for us, isn't it? I'll be back shortly.
Legends, miracles, great works of faith. They seem to happen all at once, out of nowhere. And I shouldn't be surprised if in many cases it isn't true. But, of course, there are many things that are carefully prepared. Spontaneity is always most spectacular when it has been painstakingly rehearsed. Ask the average comedian. He'll admit that his best ad-libs are the ones in the script. Our cast included Norman Rose, Bryna Rayburn, E.B. Juster, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I'm sorry to have put you to all this trouble. Trouble? This could be fantastic. It, it really could. I'm going to suggest to your aunt and uncle that we take more time and run tests quite scientifically. Is there a place where I could set up some equipment and we wouldn't be disturbed? Well, I'm sure they'll let us use the barn. Now, listen, I know that I can see for miles around. For instance, there's an airport about 20 miles away, I think, and I can see the airplanes on that field and their colors and the hangars and even that um, red stocking thing that tells which way the wind is blowing. When you see, Jessica, how do you feel? As if the whole top of my head is on fire. There's so much light that comes into my head, it almost burns me. And everything is very clear. Clearer than I remember it when I could see with my two eyes. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.